of breaking news we must deal with out of the gate. Georgia Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene has filed a motion to oust the Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson, because of the House spinning resolution that passed uh, with majority Democratic support last night. There is the old uh, Hastert rule uh, that was developed by pedophile Diddy Hastert that uh, the Republicans would not move forward with a piece of legislation unless it had majority Republican support. Again, it was uh, conjured up by a the pedophile, uh, Denny Hastert, who had been Speaker of the House for some time. And, well, the Speaker of the House last night moved the compromise package, and the conservatives didn't want it. Uh, I've got good friends of mine in Congress who are deeply opposed to it, and I share their view on this spending package. It it didn't need to pass. Had they not passed it and stuck to what they had, they would have had reductions in spending forced upon them by the prior deal. But there's a problem. And that is Republicans have a two to three seat majority of the House of Representatives. For my friends who are conservatives in the House, I feel your pain on this. It's it's ridiculous we keep passing these spinning packages, but win elections with good candidates. The populists and the conservatives rallied in 2022 and nominated a bunch of people in a bunch of districts who couldn't win general elections against Democrats. So you had a five-seat majority. You ousted Kevin McCarthy, so he quit. Uh, Ken Buck's too frustrated to stay, so he's gone. Uh, you got a, another one, what Bill Johnson or whatever, who left to be a college president. You ousted George Santos. Good for you on that one. Um, but you don't have a significant majority. Conservatives are outnumbered by moderate Republicans. And the moderate Republicans were willing to go along with conservatives to do spending cuts earlier this year until Matt Gates decided to oust the Speaker of the House. And after that, the moderate uh, Republicans said, a pox on all your houses, we're done. You people aren't serious. So Matt Gates and the populist ousting Speaker McCarthy burned bridges with the moderates who had agreed with conservatives to make major cuts in government. Now the populist, led by Marjorie Taylor Greene, wants to oust this speaker. Now, for perspective, Mike Johnson, the current Speaker of the House, is the first Bible-believing, evangelical, pro-life movement conservative to be Speaker of the House, period. Don't give me Newt Gingrich. Newt Gingrich actually was more moderate than people like to believe. Uh, In fact, uh, when conservatives were angsty about Newt Gingrich, it was the moderates who saved him. And now, ironically, uh, the populists have put Mike Johnson in this position where the Democrats and moderate Republicans will save him. So you have the first evangelical, Bible-believing, pro-life, socially conservative, movement conservative, Speaker of the House of Representatives. And you're going to make him beholden to the Democrats and moderates by trying to oust him. uh, And he's not going to get ousted. Unlike McCarthy, the votes are there to save this Speaker of the House because the Democrats have come forward and said, we're we're done. We're, we're, We're tired of the clown show. We got a few months until the election. And so instead of trying to win elections, and by the way, you should note that the reason Republicans don't have a significant majority is because of people like Marjorie Taylor Greene, who with Donald Trump and others sided with a bunch of of populist Republicans who weren't good fits for their districts. And they won primaries, but they couldn't win general elections. You know, the goal is not to win a primary. It's to win a general election. And what's so funny is that in a number of cases, they ousted incumbent Republicans who had been good fits for the district, who the base liked until Donald Trump decided he was mad at them. You, you got to find candidates who can win the general election, not candidates who can win the primary. So for my friends in the House of Representatives who are, are strong conservatives, my buddy Chip Roy has been railing against the spinning package, and he's, everything he said he, he's absolutely right about. And in fact, he called out social conservative groups the other night on the floor of the House who didn't have his back, who were willing to give a pass on this. And, and he's right. They didn't fight. But I would submit the reason they didn't fight is because in a two-seat House majority where the conservatives are the minority, the vast minority, conservatives aren't going to get much of what they want. And they're really not going to get much of what they wanted when the populists, who aren't conservative but sound like it, 
keep ousting speakers of the House who had been doing their best to give conservatives some of what they wanted. Really is mind-boggling to me now that you have a, this really, Mike Johnson really is the first movement conservative evangelical pro-life Speaker of the House. When he was in the Louisiana legislature, he pushed for uh, the, the marriage reform legislation uh, that, that got rid of no-fault divorce in Louisiana. He pushed for um, pro-life legislation. He pushed for uh, fetal heartbeat bans. He, he was a, a social conservative. He's the first real, authentic social conservative uh, of that caliber to be Speaker of the House. And the populists who claim to be conservatives, they want to oust him. They've, they've finally got one of their own, and, and they're not happy, and they're not happy because he's not giving them their way, but he's not giving them their way because it's a matter of votes. They don't have the votes, and, and if you're frustrated by the situation in the House of Representatives, as I am, you should be finding good conservative candidates to run for the House of Representatives who can actually win general elections so that they can go to Congress and fight for conservative reform instead of the clown show candidates that got nominated in 2022 that the Democrats then propped up and they lost general elections to Democrats. What are we doing here? Snatching defeat from the jaws of victory. And you know what's so funny here is that uh, the Democrats, moderate Republicans, they're going to prop up Speaker Johnson. By the way, he's not their candidate. He's too conservative for them. They just don't want to go through this again. So then what's going to happen is you're going to have conservatives. Well, he's not our speaker. He's the Democrat speaker. So you're going to put the Democrats in charge of the House? You know, in, in the worst case scenario here, Mike Johnson says, well, screw this. I quit if they oust him. And that puts the Democrats one seat closer to uh Hakeem Jeffries being Speaker of the House, before we even get to the election, the Democrats could sit in the Speaker's chair, uh, and the Democrats in the Senate and the Democrats in the House could push all sorts of um, major Democratic legislation before we even get to the election because of Marjorie Taylor Greene. She's handing the House to the Democrats. Now, you have to understand that for people like Marjorie Taylor Greene, already fundraising on this, by the way, um, it doesn't matter if you're in the in the majority of the minority in the House because you don't actually want to get anything done. You just want to fundraise. You you want to go on TV. You want to make. You want to raise a lot of money. You 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 don't have an agenda. the The wild difference between the Marjorie Taylor Greens of the world and the Alexandria Ocasio Cortezes of the world is that AOC recognizes she has to be in the majority to get something done that she wants done. She has a progressive agenda. She wants passed. And so she was willing to accommodate people that she viewed as more moderate than her, like, of all people, Nancy Pelosi, who AOC thinks is to the right of the Democrats, which is bizarre to me because Pelosi's so left. But she was willing to hold her nose and prop up uh, Nancy Pelosi and even Joe Biden in the White House because she needs them so that she can be in the majority. But uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene doesn't have to be in the majority because she will send people a fundraising note saying, send me money. I decided to oust the speaker and they will write her a check. That's God's honest truth here. And then you have those who confuse tactics and strategy. This is, I, I got a bone to pick with a lot of the conservative movement right now, and they are confusing strategy and tactics. They're doing a series of tactics that they think is a strategy. They have no overarching strategy. The strategy is, is how to, here's the end game. How, what's the big vision to accomplish it? And then the tactics are the series of tools you deploy to accomplish your strategy to get to your end game. If you think about it as a paragraph, the strategy is the paragraph and the tactics are the sentences. And conservatives in the conservative movement somehow have, have confused tactics and said these tactics, they're our strategy. Well, you're just you're you're moving back and forth. You're zigzagging. You don't have some overall uh, goal that you want to accomplish. You want to accomplish conservative reforms. Well, you need buy-in from moderates in the House of Representatives, and to get buy-in from the moderates in the House of Representatives to accomplish your goals. And remember, those moderate Republicans were willing to do massive cuts in government with conservatives until Matt Gates blew it all up with his moved House Speaker McCarthy. So now there's no trust. You got to rebuild trust with the moderates. You got to rebuild trust with the moderates. Ousting another speaker doesn't rebuild that trust. The moderates showed you they were willing to, to make some cuts. They're concerned about the fiscal cliff. 
Instead, what you're going to do now, thanks to Marjorie Taylor Greene, is have the moderate Republicans ally with the Democrats to save the Speaker of the House, the one conservative in this mix. And who is the conservative speaker now going to be beholden to? Not the conservatives and the populists who want to get government cut. He's going to be beholden to the people who are fine growing government. Way to go, everyone. Well done. What a clown show. I don't blame my friend Ken Buck for wanting to wash his hands of it and be done with it. The reality, the God's honest truth, is you have a two, three seat Senate or House majority, you can't get anything done. The spending package grew government, and that's the status quo. The status quo is that the spending packages, every time you pass a continuing resolution, it incrementally increases the size and scope of government. They're bad. They should get back to budgeting. But they blew that up by ousting McCarthy as well. So you're not going to get anything you want. And I feel real bad for my my authentically conservative friends in the House of Representatives who are deeply concerned with the size and scope of federal spending because I am deeply concerned with the size and scope of federal spending. We're headed off a fiscal cliff. But when you burn bridges with your colleagues in the Republican conference by continually agitating to House speakers, you're not willing to compromise you're willing to vilify your fellow Republicans and accuse them of, of being out to destroy the country, you, you've, you don't have earned goodwill with them. I was talking to a, a Republican former state legislator in Georgia the other night. One of the most conservative members in the House of Representatives to have ever existed in, in the Georgia House, and yet he was remarkably successful in getting things done, even though the, the Speaker of the House at the time hated his guts. He said, what, what people don't understand at this point is that you got to build relationships. And he befriended so many members of the state house when he voted against their legislation. They knew it wasn't personal. They knew it was on principle. And uh, when he wanted to advance legislation, they knew he cared about. They were friends with him. And if it didn't offend their sensibilities, they were willing to advance conservative legislation um, because he was willing to build bridges and recognize you can't vilify everyone you disagree with. You have to build bridges and build friendships so that when the time comes for you to oppose each other, they don't take it personally. Right now, all the Republicans in the House hate all the Republicans in the House. They couldn't even show up at a retreat for each other. And all this does is engender more ill will on the Republican side and keeps the Republicans from being able to actually get on board a plan that they were all on board with to begin with to cut government spending. Again, you cannot emphasize this enough. The moderate Republicans were willing to cut spending. They were willing to join a conservative plan to reduce the size and scope of the federal government. And then Matt Gates blew it all up by ousting Speaker McCarthy. And now ever since, we've had a series of threats leading to today, Marjorie Taylor Greene trying to oust this Speaker of the House. The votes aren't actually there for it this time because the Democrats are going to stand with the guy to keep him in place because they're tired of the clown show too. And you know what's going to happen? More bad will more ill will, more bad feelings, more bad thoughts, and more refusal to get back to where the Republicans had been at the beginning with a plan to cut government spending because nobody trusts the clowns who keep trying to oust the speakers, snatching defeat from the jaws of victory, confusing tactics for strategy. It's what they do best.